All right. Uh, I'm Dave Ratt, and I'm going to talk about gain structure. Gain structure refers to the level that the audio signal uh, is at as it travels through the various pieces of audio equipment or through a mixing board is uh, typically what people are talking about. Um, in order to understand gain structure, uh, there's two basic types of level controls that we deal with um, in audio gear. One of them is a gain knob, which is basically a little amplifier. And the gain knob controls the amount of increase in volume or in level or in voltage to the signal that's coming in. It, it, um, it amplifies it. Um, like most amplifiers, when you get try and uh, turn it up too loud, it reaches a point where it's uh, incapable of amplifying beyond a certain point. It can only get so loud and then it can't do any more. At that point, typically there's a light, a peak light or a clip light, which says that the amplifier is now distorting. The other type of audio uh, level control we have is called an attenuator. An attenuator, it might have a little amplifier before it to boost it a little bit. It takes whatever signal it is and doesn't alter it at all. It just reduces it in volume. So when it's up all the way, it does nothing. It goes straight through. It's like a piece of wire. As you turn it down, uh, you turn the signal and the noise to a lower level. There's some uh, confusion regarding the uh, differences between the two. I've heard it said uh, by several people that um, if you turn up the gain knob, you'll be bringing up the singer and also the background noise. Whereas if you use the fader, it tends to only bring up the signal and not the background noise. Or you're, you're more likely to increase the background noise with the gain pot. Um, that's partially true. Uh, it's only true if you are operating your gain pot where you've reached a point where the signal can't get any louder, the loudest signal can't get louder, so as you turn it up, uh, the background noise uh, sounds like it's coming up because the primary signal is incapable of reaching any uh, more output. If you operate your mic pre's a good distance from clipping, um, the sonic difference between these two controls is negligible or none at all. Uh, to be honest, these things have no idea. They don't know the difference between background noise and the actual signal. Um, so, what is proper gain structure? Um, proper gain structure is uh, keeping three things in order. First of all, you want to make sure that you have enough gain to get the signal above the noise floor. To uh, You have noise everywhere. You want to make sure that the noise is an insignificant or minor um, component to the overall signal. Uh, too low of gain, you're going to have noise issues. Uh, you want to make sure that the gain is not set so that it's so loud that you're actually distorting the signal and affecting it, um, uh, causing it to sound in a way you don't desire. And finally, you want to set it so that the other knobs, the other controls, are in logical and controllable positions. So, if you try and get every last drop of gain out right before clipping and just under the clip light, um, a lot of times that will force the rest of your knobs down to unusably low levels. If you try and keep the gain knob so far from clipping, then you'll often find that your other controls reach their maximum level and you run out of the ability to control it and you actually have to start turning it up here. Um, so a proper gain structure, it's pretty much logical. It's, you want to make sure that um, the knobs are in convenient and usable positions. So, how do you set up a proper gain structure? Follow it backwards. What I do is I actually set my faders how I want them to see. I um, make them visually look how I want the show to sound. I want the kick drums, you know, up maybe here, a snare drum a little lower, or about the same. Hi-hat, I want it dropped down. Uh, the toms kind of in that same region. I like the guitar and bass about mid-level and I like the vocals up about plus three on the faders. Um, the ability, because guitar solos I want a lot of room to push them up during a solo. Uh, the kick and snare I want those consistently um, hotter than nominal. And by building the mix on the fader the way I want to see it, the way I envision the band should sound and the way I um, like to have control over it, 
Uh, then that gives me a starting point. Now I know where these need to be. Uh, the other thing I'll do is make sure your PA is off. Is while they're playing, I will crank the game pot. Check, check, check. Hey, 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 up in the clip. Hey, 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 and then I'll bring. Once in the clipping. Hey, 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 hey. I'll turn it down. Maybe quarter turn, a little less than a quarter turn down, and I'll do that all the way across. In fact, I'll have the whole band play. I don't like to do kick, snare, tom. How often do I have a band on stage playing just the rack tom during the middle of the show? Never. I never have that. So what's the use of checking it by itself? Unless I have a problem with it, the way I line check, sound check a band is I have the whole band go on stage, get their monitors worked out, and uh, play songs. They can just rehearse and play. Uh, if it's a bigger band, maybe we have the backline guys do it and just have them play. While they're playing, I crank each gain pot up, find clipping, come down a quarter turn. Now I've got my gain set. The next thing I do is I know where my faders are. Bring my main faders up to where I want to see those, which is typically a zero, um, which is about the three quarter position. And then I bring my kick drum up, find out if it's about where I want it. And if it's a little too, if I have to go up too high, maybe I'll add some more gain to push it down. And then I'll follow that pattern. So I will massage the settings of the game pots in order to force the faders to be how I want it to look with my output faders at nominal. Then I go through and make sure that my aug sends um, aren't crunched all the way down to uh, the minimum or all the way up at maximum. I will adjust that by the master. Um, I like to see my effect sense straight up and down at 12, so I'll affect the master until I get that about right. And um, that's it. It's pretty straightforward and simple. If you find that you've got faders cranked all the way up to um, maximum, this board's a bit old, something wrong in there. There we go, fixed it. Um, then maybe you have some issues with the next piece of gear in line. Um, so, let's talk about gear. You've got various components of gear. You're interconnecting. You've got XLR connectors, quarter inch connectors, hopefully not too many RCA connectors. Um, you see minus 10, plus 4, minus 20 switches on various pieces of gear. You've got mic level, line level. In a perfect world, all your gear would just be plus 4. You'd have your microphone level coming in, you'd crank it up, you'd get your level set, and then everything else would be uh, plus 4 level. And you could plug everything in, and everything's in this a nice uh, half to three quarter range and um, everything will come up. Occasionally you'll find that you have maybe a piece of uh, pro audio gear that's got a plus four out and you've got an older cheaper EQ that maybe takes a minus 20 or some lower level in uh, where you're having to reduce your faders down to a low level. Uh, whenever you do that you're pretty much going to be adding noise or on the verge of distorting something. Um, that's uh, a bit more complex than I want to get into for this. A simple way to set up your board, you set it up logically, it's common sense, get your knobs where you want to see them, keep these things out of peak, and um, on the critical things that you want clean. Oh, peak, peak lights. It does not hurt the console to have the channel clip. Hey, 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 that thing is not going to clip itself to death. It's not going to get hot and blow up and it's not going to have unfriendly feelings and um, sound bad tomorrow because you uh, punished it today with too much uh, red light. Um, clip lights, um, within reason, you can um, pretty much run these as hot or cold as you want as long as you're willing to deal with the sound you get. I personally like to clip my kick drum and snare drum and percussive instruments on uh, most high quality consoles. Um, unless the clip sound of the console is some kind of gritty snap or it adds some artifact that I find displeasing, uh, I try never to clip the vocals, but if they clip occasionally, it's not that big of a deal. You don't need to freak out. All right, so I um, hope that was uh, helpful, useful, informative, whatever. If you find these videos interesting and uh, you might want to check out some other ones, uh, I try and cover subjects that um, aren't normally taught in school or different angles, different explanations for uh, the various aspects of being a pro audio engineer. Um, all right.